So we are live. Hi, Sky Dancer, Grasshopper, Mike. Um, I don't know if anybody else is here. Yeah, they are. I was watching the convo when I first came in for a minute. Well, I see Mike and Grasshopper and Sky Dancer. Oh, Mike was the one I didn't hear you say. Sorry. Oh. oh. Ooh, Jesus. <sighs> I'm always glad to go back to work, back to the art, because these days off, restful days are not for the faint of heart, I tell you. See what's going on in that chat. I had one of my friends. I guess she watched. I was just asking her if she sent these to me because there was no note or anything. But I guess she watched one of my videos where I showed her I write down the oil painting colors that I use and stuff and make notes about the work as I do it. And she sent me like six notebooks. So I stepped out on the porch today and there's a box there and I opened it up and there's six notebooks in it. No idea who it's from or anything. <laughs> so I figured it must be my friend. So I, I just sent her a message and asked her if it was her and she's like, um, I don't know. Did you get some notebooks? I was like, yeah. And then she's like, oh yeah, I remember ordering those for you. <laughs> but they're just like notebooks that I can write stuff in. So Nice. But that's kind of handy to have one sitting right here by the screen too, so I can, as pe when somebody buys something, I can write it down so that I don't forget. Hi, cat. And then I ordered some water and a f very few groceries today. And I got them because I'm like broke and I got to pay some bills and I got to sell some stuff. And But I got them and I got a zucchini that I didn't order. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do with the zucchini. Oh, I bet I never mind. And, uh, no, Bob, it's a small zucchini. <laughs> I trash cat. And, um, oh, and a little roll of Jimmy Dean sausage, too, that I also did not order. So I got a couple of freebies today. And some notebooks. Hey, Pavana. I almost didn't stream because I am not feeling good. I have not been feeling good all day, but I've got to try to. Um, I didn't finish anything today that I was going to for an auction tonight, so I'll probably be streaming again tomorrow and doing an auction. But I've still got the stuff that I didn't sell yet from the other night, like a buffalo. Oh, and the grebe. I've still got the grebe. I'm surprised no one left that. So, oh, that was me, Rick, not her. And there is Rick. And Rick is not going to come up and join us today drawing because he's in Portland, where I grew up outside of Portland. So, I could like spend an hour and tell him every place he needs to go, but <laughs> I'm sure he's there doing something. Well, Pam, are any of those places still there now? Yeah, I do believe so. Pam been ordering. I haven't heard anything disappearing. about Multnomah Falls disappearing or anything like that. So, which falls? Klamath Falls? No, Multnomah Falls. Multnomah Falls. So. Multnomah Falls. I think it's the biggest waterfall in the United States. So I think Klamath must be up above Portland. Klamath Falls is south of Portland. Is it? Yeah. Ah. Quite a ways south of Portland. It's closer to the Oregon California border. Let's just send me some nice salmon he would can. Yeah. Pickle. Uh, Rick says they're going to go to Mom um, Falls on the way back. You need to give yourself plenty of time because if you go, like when you pull into the Multnomah Falls parking lot, there should be a road that you can get on that goes kind of like heads up the mountains. It's called a scenic, scenic loop or something like that. 
but yeah, it's along the Columbia River. But if you take that road and just a little ways up the road and then a little ways more, a little, there's like six pull-offs for trailheads. And they're all pretty close. I mean, they aren't they aren't a long walk. And one of them, uh, there's some really cool waterfalls. Bri Bridal Veil Falls is one that's, that's worth walking Ooh. down to. And it's just really pretty. And you'll see like you know, little, little trails to these waterfalls. And it's like you can't even hear yourself walking because of all the the spongy stuff on the trail and there's fern, great big huge ferns overhanging the trails and everything it's really pretty and there's one that doesn't have a waterfall but it has like a natural arch bridge like a rock bridge over a, a little canyon and it's got like some i think there's like six or seven things maybe more than that that different kinds of fauna that are found nowhere else in the world, just in that one canyon. So it's worth a little walk down there too. But Multnomah Falls is a touristy one and it's huge and it's really pretty. But if you head up the little road past Multnomah Falls, a little scenic route road, there'll be little pull-offs to different, um, I can say different little trails and smaller waterfalls that are very much worth your time. You hiked up at the very top. Yeah, I've hiked up at the top a couple times up the top of Multnomah Falls. It's a nice switchback, switchback steep trail. Damn it, yeah, I told you to stop. And like I say, Multnomah Falls itself is really pretty and stuff, but like I say, if you have time, there's that extra little, little um, scenic trail that's or scenic road that's got some really neat trails on it. Hi, Jenny Lynn. Hey, Jenny. Hey, Jenny. You must have your, what you call it, don't pay. I'm going hear myself. Going to a re-swap with Ian tomorrow. Nice. Then you're leaving Monday morning. Cool. Well, like I said, if you've got time, I would stop at Multnomah Falls and like head up. There's also on the way, before you get to Multnomah Falls, there's the Bonneville Dam fish hatchery that's kind of fun too for a quick stop let's see where they hatch trout out and stuff and they used to have some really big um sturgeons there that you could see but I, somebody climbed in the pool one time and killed off the bit and with a knife and killed the biggest ones for some stupid reason don't ask me why but i think they might have some more again but yeah We went to the bookstore downtown. It was so fun. Yep. Portland is a fun place to be. Don't they have a real, real homeless problem there? Not really. Not any more than any other big city. I mean, there is homeless people, but there's homeless people everywhere. So. There's a um, here. There are some propaganda films out about Portland and how horrible it is and stuff, but it's just a a right wing conspiracy theory saying Portland's got all this horrible violence going on and all that crap. And it's just crap. But my kids live there, and there's there's nothing wrong with it. the The Portland Zoo is really pretty too, and there's a um, a Japanese gardens of Portland too. That's really beautiful to go to. Yeah, I, I'll never forget that when somebody climbed in and killed the sturgeons. I mean, they were they were really old. Sturgeons get really old, and these guys were over six feet long, and there was absolutely no reason to do something like that. Uh, somebody climbed in in the middle of the night and killed them. Mind your own. Yeah, Portland is not any worse than any other city in the United States. Probably a lot better than some of them. Atlanta was real bad a few years back, but I think they've done a whole lot to change that. The only thing that I've heard about Portland is um, 
the police stopped responding to the downtown stuff, stuff that happens downtown, but it's more as a puny, trying to punish the liberals. So it's like not the end of the world, but yeah, that's the only thing I've heard that's different about it from when I lived there. Hi, Holly. Hey, you freaky lady. Like I said, I know there is some really wild videos out, you know, talking about the violence in Portland and stuff, which is just garbage. Just conspiracy crap. From Tampa, Florida, it had its rough spots, yeah. Are you going to work on art tonight, Pam? Yeah, when everybody gets here, I'll think of something to do. It's um, I've got a couple bigger drawings going that I wanted to have done for tonight, but I didn't, and I am not going to because I just don't feel good. So, but I'll probably do a card. But if anybody's interested, I do still have a couple cards. I have. A um, trumpeter swan. A trumpeter swan. And of course the grebe. And a buffalo bowl. I'm and surprised. then I'm, work, I'm working on a roadrunner, drawing of a roadrunner, but I'm not even going to try tonight because, like I say, I just have not been feeling good. Is that for Chappie? Yeah. I'm surprised you've got that bull as rare, as infrequently as you draw a bull. Seems oh, Cap like makes $30 on the swan. So... I'm sure that we only have 11 people in here. And I'm just going to say that it has sold the cat for $30. <laughs> I'm writing that down. On your See, this, is, this is where the notebooks come in handy. I can just keep a notebook for just writing sales into. And that way I don't have to like look back through the stream trying to figure out who bid on what, which I have had to do before. Well, as your legal advisor, I recommend you count it down so you don't get. Oh, okay. Thirty dollars on the swan going once, <laughs> and thirty dollars on the swan going twice, and sold the cat for thirty dollars. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that auction last night uh, for Deb's uh, grandbaby medical equipment was nice on uh, Craig's and Bell's. I ended up buying three lots of gems and crystals and stuff. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay, cat. Yeah, they had really good prices on them and just bid on them and they started below that. And there were a couple of things I'd been wanting anyway. So when they came up, I got them. Yeah, I saw you got uh, the last Pleco anyway. I thought about those Plecos and I've got all these fish anyway. So I got other things. I'm trying to stay on a budget. I'm going to revisit this piece I was so disappointed in the last time uh, that we drew, we did art. See if I could do anything with that tree and finish out the negative space but, and practice some, uh, what was it, um, per perception. Try to get something in there. Come here. Come on.
Hello. Hello, pretty boy. Here he comes. Oh, you come for Pam, but not for me. Yeah. <laughs> Hello there. I know what he was doing. He wanted, I was eating some Amish potato salad. I love that. Just for a snack while ago, and he wanted some, so I put him a couple of spoons and a little a lid, a bowl lid, and he didn't finish it all, but I bet he has now. That's where he went on the table. Uh, there must be. Well, I know we got the the stuff going on. The Aquashella stuff is on, going on this weekend, so people are at that. But there must be some other streams going on too, because there's nobody in here. I mean, all the cool people are in here, but there's not a lot of people in here. Everybody that's anybody's here. Yep. Yep. Um, usually, you do better on Sunday, anyway. Yeah, so I'll probably do a stream. I'll probably stream tomorrow because I've got to raise up a little bit of money before Monday, or I'm going to be in big trouble. So, and Cat, I oh, I think Cat stepped away for a minute. I was going to tell her that I have her address still. So that's what I can do with one of those notebook twos: is put everybody, write everybody's address in it. There's a thought. Yeah, so I don't have to like look up addresses every time. I can just have them in a notebook. I had to go into the ARC yesterday on my day off because the lead volunteer was sick and wanted to leave. Hey, BJ. So I was in Knoxville getting ready to snake shop and had to come back. Mm. Worm, what is that? Better not be. I've got like the chills tonight. You know yeah. how when you aren't feeling good and you feel chilled? That's how I feel right now. Yeah. I was going to listen to look at the stream again from two times ago to say which drawing that was that I want from uh, Sarah, and I didn't. I was running late from the store and stuff. Yeah, she should be getting here pretty soon. When she gets here, I might go over there and watch. Worm, put that down. Put it down. <laughs> Coffee's making me hot, hotter. I should have made some coffee, I guess, before the stream started. Something's wrong. Well, it's, I know what's wrong is I don't feel good, but yeah, I'm cold. And it's warmer today than it has been. I shouldn't be cold, but I am just cold. Chilled, chilled. I look kind of pale too, don't I? I told you that. Peaking. Yeah. Yep, that's kind of how I felt all day. Yeah. Hello. I'm not even going to try to put my hair back on my head. It's I should send you a notebook with the draw drawings. Because I'm not sure what I'm going to do with six notebooks. Did Blackie and Sarah say they'll be in? Um, they didn't say they weren't. They just haven't answered at all, but they never do. They just show up, so I just expect them to show up when they're when they're ready. Here, let me call Sarah. Why do you get to come back when I take this off? Oh my goodness! Yeah, 
Yep, they haven't said anything, but like I say, they never do, so. I see that Blackie has seen the link that I sent. And Sarah is probably on her way home from work. So I guess, did she change her hours? She was talking about it. I'll be hadn't talked to her since then. Oh, thank you, Kat. BJ, I was looking at your Facebook for some reason. You might have commented on something I posted or something, maybe from the ARC anyway, or liked it. But I was looking at your Facebook page again. I looked at it a long time ago. I forgot you used to be an exotic dancer. See if she's paying attention. That was you, Bob. You used to be the exotic dancer. Everybody knows that. I used to do that. That's the only way I made it through college, through nursing school. That's how I learned to twerk. I have been twerking, you know. Have you seen that um, prank that's going around on Instagram or YouTube where like a granddaughter will sit down with a grandmother and they tell the grandmother that they're applying for this some kind of grant that's a thousand dollars or no big deal but still you have to submit a video and talk about you know your family and the history and anyway they'll start talking about their grandmother and how she raised seven kids and um, raised the family when the dad died in the coal mine and then for a while she was a prostitute and a stripper and the grandmother's faces were always like what the hell <laughs> it's really cute Yeah, I saw you hadn't posted a lot on there, but it was still fun looking at it again. I don't blame you. I mean, how can you talk exotic dancing? She's an EMT also, Pam. BJ. Yeah, I remember I've talked to her a little bit about it before. I don't dance well, but the dollars would be phenomenal. Oh. oh, I remember when I was like 18, 19 years old, I had some friends that were trying to convince me to go up to Alaska and dance and stuff up there because they said that I could like make a fortune and buy my own house and stuff and be set for life, but I never did. Can't dance. I bet you're a mean slow dancer, Pam. No, I can't dance for shit. I know you like that country western. Oh yeah, I love country western. <laughs> You're missing a lot, Sammy. You're missing a lot. I don't use it very much. Well, I do use it a lot, but it's for the ARC primarily. I don't use my personal page much at all. But I keep 5,000 friends all the time. I don't know. How I only that. use my Facebook page to post smart alec meetings and shit. Yep, you're one of my f Facebook friends. Don't tell our hearts. Oh, achy breaky heart. That was what's your name's daddy? Billy Billy Ray, what? Yeah, Billy Ray Cyrus. She's tearing it up. She's got that hit song. I like that song. I can buy I just, this is my sole purpose of having Facebook is so that I can find stuff like this gem here. I'll show you real quick. Oh God. Don't 
get blocked. I mean, don't get it's too short. <laughs> This yeah, is one of those, yep, this is true things. That is a truism. Yep. Now watch, he'll come back when I take this hot towel off my shoulder. I got a new shirt today. I got a couple, but this one's Herbology. And Harry oh, Potter. nice. Harry Potter. The other one's got mushrooms on it. I didn't wear it because I know how Sam is. Line dancing. I tried to do that one time um, with a coworker. We were in um, San Antonio and the case manager thing, the big thing. and. One of the events was they took us in buses out to a uh, ranch. It was like an entertainment place and had a lodge that was open there and just really nice. Uh, but it really was a working ranch and they had a band up on the stage in this lodge thing. It wasn't a lodge, it was just a covered, you know, thing and places to eat. They catered food, Western barbecue and stuff. But anyway, Tricia, what is her name? Patricia, I still keep in touch with her on Facebook. I keep in touch with a lot of people I've worked with. But she got up, that girl had had two or three beers and she was moving. I couldn't, I said, no, I gotta sit down and have my dessert. Yep. Come here, come here. I don't hear your parents squawking, so he must be okay. Bob's of mushroom teas. Yeah, it's got some big ones on there. Different kind. It's something about see the good and everything or something like that. Just got into something. He'll be up in the refrigerator before I know it. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? I love listening to that bird talk. Yeah, <laughs> oh my God, you're getting cracked. <laughs> what were you doing over here? <laughs> he says, none of your business. <laughs> Here's my keys. Let me put those over on the nail because they'll be gone missing. I don't see anything. He opened my toothpaste on the wrong end uh, a couple nights ago. He got quiet in the bathroom and I thought, well, maybe he's asleep. Nope. He was in there eating toothpaste. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> he liked it. That's just nasty, pretty boy. No, nope. he chewed a hole in the end of it and chewed up, chewed up the piece that he chewed out. Yep. Uh-oh. I'll have to mute you. I'll have to mute you, but... The little rat, I was going to wait till Sarah came, but... Uh, the little rat passed away yesterday, Friday. Oh. Poor little guy. She, she, was, she was doing well. But then I noticed that she didn't want to eat as much. Uh, but of course, and that was a sign, you know, that maybe she wasn't feeling as well. He wanted to freshen his breath. Oh my God, I stuck my tongue out at him a while ago and he tried to do something to it. He wasn't trying to look here. No. 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 No tongue. <laughs> Cause I'll bite um, that thing. Anyway, he did eat that, but the little mouse was uh, this morning when I went to get it. No, yesterday morning when I went to get it to feed it. It wasn't. It didn't. wasn't as eager. It didn't jump up, you know. And uh, but it did eat, but not as much. So I thought mm, this is not good. 
and this morning it wasn't uh, yesterday morning it wasn't dead but it, it all but was so I just made sure it was warm and it was gone a couple hours later it got a burial in the woods under the leaves yep you want to flush flush it and stop at the toilet right Mojo, hello. Mojo must be from uh, Frostmare. Yep, yep. Pam, you should be getting some subscribers from over there. I have, yeah. I think I need 10 or 12. I didn't look at it today to have... 2500 but you know when you're trying to do like any kind of uh, go like that or watch it it never does it so. so it'll get there eventually or it won't hello 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 there say hi there say don't don't mix your expressions it's hello or yeah. hi or hi there no hello there no hello. No hello there. No hello there. He's a mess. He's good while I'm here. Like if he's in the cage, he doesn't yell for me or anything. He's very good about that. Doesn't ever wake me up so far. Thank God he stopped making the tree frog noise. I haven't heard them. It's been raining hard for a couple of days, so maybe he forgot it. Crown tail, hello. Hey, crown tail. Can you say hi there? Say hi there. Hi there. Let me take it. Do you remember when there. Buddy used to say hi to everybody? Yes. I, at the beginning of the stream, I'd, I'd start saying hi to everybody, and I'd say hi and say somebody's name, and they'd bark, and then, and I'd say hi to somebody else, and they'd bark. <laughs> I know, yes, he's a big male. Isn't he? he's a big Michael, male. hello. See the pretty bird? I haven't seen you in my stream before. So, hi. <laughs> you like my ears? I've got some shiny, fancy ones, too, but these are my everyday ears. I'm wearing my everyday ears today. Then I've got my party ears. So, we've got to find something to talk about. It's kind of quiet tonight. You know, been at the show. Have you heard anything from Ed about the the show? I assume he made it okay, and he's down there doing his thing. <laughs> I forgot to tell you, Ed is his attack, his kill signal. Is kill signal what is? ED. ED? When you said that name. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> I think like at least 80% of the people in here right now are from the King Frostmer stream. Anyway, have you heard anything from Ed? Bob? The reason I'm not talking to you is because... Because he's noisy. <laughs> he never has 
stop. And then you said Ed again. Is Ed your attack word? Is that your trigger word? <laughs> Where's Ed? I think he's pissed because he was chewing on my Blue Cross Blue Shield retirement book. They gave us a book. Anyway, A Culture of Caring. He was chewing the cover off that. I noticed and I took it down. He was eating the cover, too. Hmm. Yeah. But no, I haven't heard from Ed. Uh, yeah, he did send um, today, this morning, maybe he sent a couple of uh, stuff on Instagram. Yeah, a couple of jokes or something. Yeah, Ed's live stream last night. Yep. Hey, Dr. Black. Is that the same hey, Dr. Black as Blackie? Ah! Yep, that's Blackie. Ah! And hello, Divine. How are you? Haven't seen Sarah yet, but I'm sure she's probably on her way home from work or something. Yeah, I was thinking about live streaming last night if Ed didn't go, but I saw that Ed did go. So I wasn't sure what day he was heading for Texas. So he was probably driving there today. And Bob like, muted himself again. Because he's screaming. Nobody wants to hear that. Just because I have to hear it. It's too loud. You think you don't have anybody in your chat now? <laughs> Once he works their eardrums over. Um, Ed did post a little something on Instagram or something too. It was, it was driving. He said he made it to Texas. I'm good. How are you? I am. I have definitely been better. I've been sick since like I woke up in the middle of the night, not feeling good. And I've been sick all day today, but I'm streaming. But I was going to do like a auction tonight and have some stuff ready, but I didn't do anything today other than feel sorry for myself. So, so I'm probably going to stream tomorrow night as well. Because I didn't get anything done. It was a feeling sorry for myself day. Do you ever have one, any of those, Bob? Nope. Don't ever have time. Uh, Ain't nobody got time for that shit. I know nobody has time for that shit. Sarah, I believe, has her mom and sister visiting for a belated Mother's Day. Oh, that's nice. But she said she's coming. She's not seen or replied to my messages for a couple hours, so she'll probably be here in a while. That's kind of sus, you know what? I hope she's all right. How can you tell if there's a blind man at a nude beach? It's not hard. And hey, Divine Lover, I was angry <laughs> when you said hi. That's what you need to do is, is help uh, Sam Sam launch his uh, stand-up comedian career by doing a little gig on your show every week. Yeah, Sam, you need to come up here and do you, do some jokes for us. Every day is a feeling sorry for myself day. Well, I don't do it every day, but today I definitely have not been feeling good, and I've just been, like, not doing anything. I try not to have those um, because just normally my normal thing is just kind of like, this sucks. Every now and then I'll shake myself and say, this is awesome, why are you like that? This sucks. Go back to work. Don't do that, Mike. Because you'll get that money. You'll get a check to back when you applied. You'll be rolling in that government money. I'm trying to 
trying to get forward on something. But, oh, he's so sweet. He's injured his head somehow. I mean, it's not injured, injured, but there's a feather or two missing right on the top above his left eye. I don't know if he can uh -oh. it or something or caught it on something or what. I didn't see any blood. It's been there a couple of days. Sleepy. We're going to sleep. So what all has been new? There's never anything new. I'm old, you know, so I've seen it all and done it all. Really? Did you know um, Wyatt Earp? Personally, no. <laughs> He was alive, you know, the same time you were alive. Mm. What about, um, what was his name? Um, oh, crap. Oh, well, I'll think of it. Cat may have swiped at him. No, Mike, they don't get that close, and they're afraid of him. No, that's a good guess, but no. When he was eating his potato salad before Pam went live, Holly, the one that nobody messes with. Craig, hello. She don't care. Hey, Craig. She was creeped up on him, and he gave her a look, and she backed away backwards. Yep. Oh, he's yawning. He's rubbing his head on the aquarium because nobody loves him. Nobody will rub his head. Yep. Pam would rub your head a bit. Craig, did you did you do as well last night as you hoped to for the fundraiser? I've got a nice email back from Bell. I had forgot what time it was starting, and I looked for it earlier. Well, I think you started to go live, and then something happened, and then I kept waiting, and then I forgot about it for like an hour. So I'm glad I went back. Delilah. Oh. How is your romantical situation, Trash Cat? Pastor Bear. How have you been doing? I'm past second bear. He said, How have you been past the third bear? He said, Hey, how have you been doing? <sighs> There's Blackie. Maybe he can save us from, from Grasshopper's bad jokes. I didn't even get that one. <laughs> Bears repeating. Oh. Yeah, Bears repeating. <laughs> so what do you got going on tonight, Blackie? Oh, not a lot. <clears throat> it's only been a couple of hours since I got out of bed, actually. A wee bit of a lion. Oh, wow, Craig, that's good. Yep, that's pretty good. Oh, yeah, I nice that is good. Craig. Brilliant. 1140 dollars Australian. What's that? Looks 18, 19 dollars American. A good work, anyway, Craig. It's really well done. <laughs> Hello everyone in the chat that I didn't already say hi to in the chat. You didn't say hi to me. Hi Bob. It looks like you've had your ears lowered again. No, not since the last time. Yeah. Probably just all over my head because I keep getting buzzed. But the parent.
like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is a whole two rooms, a great room with a vaulted ceiling, and he has to go that far over my head, <laughs> right over my head. 600 pounds. It's like 50 British pounds. Guy Devon. I can't wait to get the stuff that I got. There's a couple of things I have been wanting anyway. I've been watching for, so I grabbed them. Yeah, I just got a message from Sarah. She's not far away. I had, um, I did a video once about a year ago that I guess one of my friends just watched about um, how I write everything down. Like when I do oil painting, I write down what colors that I use and stuff so that if I ever need to fix it or whatever, I know what, exactly what colors I used on it, you know, like years and years later. Right. It's actually come in handy a couple times for like, um, like one time a customer wanted a second painting, but he wanted it to, be, to match the first one. So, so I had the colors written down, so that worked out good. But anyway, my friend must have decided that that was a really good idea because she sent me six notebooks today. <laughs> There's a box on my porch, and I'm like. It's got like these notebooks in it, like just notebooks with ruled paper and there's six of them. And I'm going, what the hell is this? <laughs> and where did it come from? <laughs> I didn't order this. <laughs> oh, so yeah. So I have notebooks. Six of them. We had a volunteer at the ARC that said she could never remember what I'd said, like how to, this, to do this, or we're going to change this procedure because the vet said whatever, blah, blah, blah. But she said she could never remember, so I suggested she get her a little pocket notebook. Well, damn it, she lost it. She couldn't find her notebook. So. Oh, no. Yeah, she's one of the ones. Well, they're kind of like, like I'm using one of them right now to write down. I figured every week I'll write down what I sell. And that way I won't have to, because I have before I had to go back and look through the streams to figure out who bought what. So if I have a notebook sitting right here, I can write everything down as I sell it. And then I don't have to go back and look. And I'll probably use one of them to write addresses in. So I don't have to keep looking up addresses all the time. Good day, BJ. So that's two of them. You could start your memoir. Anakin, hello. Yeah, Annie. I could. Hey, I could Annie. write. Down, I could write down insults to insult Bob and 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 Blackie on stream. You know, if I have everything written down, then I won't forget the best ones. That would take the other four notebooks right there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pam did not make coffee. I did that. not make coffee. I should have because I'm like really chilled because I haven't, but that's from not feeling good. It's like, it's not really that cold in the house, but, but today has not been a good day as far as feeling good. So I'm kind of chilled. Sarah sent me a picture this morning of the weather up at her house and it said, that it was 0 0.2 degrees Celsius feels like minus one point something or other. <clears throat> but also her um her weather app that she was using said it was 15 degrees here the other the other morning and it was actually 11. So I wonder if um, maybe her one might be out as well. She might have actually had proper negative temperatures last night or this morning. Hmm. That's right. You guys have winter coming on. Yeah. Somebody it's only said just it was, started to feel like it. Maybe it was Adele. Somebody said it was getting cold. On, they were posting something. Did you see yeah, what Mike said, Pam? Certainly yeah. hasn't been. 
<laughs> we've got um um we went from like really cold winter time to god damn it i've got to mow the grass now just like mm. overnight <laughs> just like bam <laughs> Took it for hug. Rain. It's been raining here for two days. I was going to mow the grass at the ark today, but it was pouring it's rain. It's been raining here for like four or five days, which is probably why I looked out when I stepped outside tonight. There was the grass is like eight inches tall, so I'm seriously going to have to do some mowing. Yeah, you know, we had like two or three days of rain in a row where it was just gross weather non-stop and then it's now it's been three days of no clouds in the sky at all and just crisp cold weather yeah, my nice God. in the sun i'm surprised you complain about eight inches Pam. i had to consider whether i was going to say that or not <laughs> what the hell <laughs> I was going to say, I bet it's been a while since you've seen eight inches, but anyway. Hey, Garcia. Hey, Garcia. I've got, um, well, I, I told you I got that free zucchini today, so, you know. Somebody sent her a sausage and a zucchini in her, in her order. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got some water and some, um, some coffee mate and... A couple little things and I was like putting everything away and I had a I have a um a pound of Jimmy Dean sausage that I didn't order and a zucchini that I didn't order so I got two freebies <coughs> and six notebooks. Well you just count your blessings Pam. <laughs> yeah zucchini's always good. Whether whether for fun or for eating. <laughs> Fried zucchini strips, Italian. That's good. Sex toys are stocked up now. Yep, yep. Was the sausage already in the form of sausages, or is it just the sausage mince? It's like a a roll, like a one pound roll of sausage. There you go. I hope you're not thinking of naming those things, Bob. Yeah, my, um, I have a zucchini named Bob. <laughs> well, they don't they don't take batteries. That it, is, it is pretty small, so my ex, she's a disabled lady and she um used to always do the home delivery groceries and she was quite close friends with quite a few of the girls in the supermarket who used to do the uh you know the picking of the stuff yeah and quite often she'd get random extra things in her grocery delivery if her friends were doing the picking they'd play nice little fun jokes on her or give her nice fun good stuff <laughs> Jesus, Probably shouldn't clear. say that. That's a crime, really, isn't it? <laughs> well, I wasn't going to tell on myself, but usually when I get home from buying something, even fish or stuff, I like to look at my receipt just because. And I did not pay for my gallon of Mayfield chocolate milk at Walmart tonight. Uh-oh. I know. It's five bucks. It's not on there. But I sure am enjoying that chocolate milk. It's five bucks better in your pocket, pocket than Walmart's pocket. I don't feel so bad for buying those two little terrarium plants now for the snakes. We all know where Bob's mind is at. You better believe it. Pam, I thought you woke up there for a moment when you came back with that comment. Almost. 
That's really, can y'all hear him like grit, not gritting his teeth, but. I can see his mouth moving like he's chewing something. Like rolling a bird seed around in his mouth or something. Hello there. Hello there. Hello there. Hello. <laughs> Pam keeps mixing up your your things, doesn't she? It's supposed to be hi there. Oh, hi there. Hi there. What have hi you got there. against? What have you got against? Hello there. He just never has said that. No, oh, right. He just says hello, 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 or hi there. All the Star Wars fans would appreciate it if he'd say hello there. That would be cool. Getting sleepy. You know, he doesn't have anything except his purchase to chew on to keep his bill. I wondered if it's bothering him. Don't you get him like a cuddle bone or something like that for that? Well, I've got cuddle bones, but as big as he is, he doesn't have one in there, so he needs it anyway for the potassium, I mean the calcium. But I'll put him some sticks in there. I did look at some like block toys or something at Walmart for parrots, but they didn't have that. I have to go to Petco, I guess, for that. I actually have some kindling sticks that are in my, uh, they're, they're wood. I'm sure they're safe. They're over there in my kindling basket or whatever by the fireplace, but it's a natural gas fireplace. So I'll give him one of those. Rinse it off, good, the dust off. How does that sound? You have your own kindling stick to chew on. Pam, why don't you show what you show your wares again? Where's my wares? Why don't you show your wares again? <laughs> I just have a couple of things. Cat bought this earlier. Oh, nice. Swan. And I've still got a buffalo bowl. And the grebe for some reason nobody wants the grebe which really surprises me because it's actually kind of a sweet little drawing but but nobody wants the grebe and then i've still got the i had to order some stuff today too for which is why i put in an order for um i got some plastic bags to put over my artwork to ship it because I was out of them. But I've got this guy still. And the infamous elk butt. You didn't show the uh, ram earlier or the elk. Nope. So that's what I've got. And then I'll have some more tomorrow night. I'm going to do a stream tomorrow night, Blackie. So. Talk to Sarah if she cannot make it. Get a, get some photographs of and a list of what she's got for sale that you, she wants to push. Because I was gonna do it tonight, but I have been sick since the middle of the night. I woke up in the middle of the night not feeling good and have not felt good all day, and so I'm just gonna have to do it tomorrow because I did not get anything prepared today. Because I've just been sitting here feeling sorry for myself, staring at my six new notebooks. <laughs> that happens to us all. <laughs> oh, you got That's notebooks it. too? <laughs> yeah, I, I got. When when I first started drawing on these streams, and you know, then I decided that I needed new art books because I had one sketch pad that had two or three pages. That were probably not even drawable on because of stuff on the back of that page or splotches or dirt so yeah i bought like three two or three a4 size sketchbooks and then three or four a5 size sketchbooks so they're still sitting most of them apart from this one that i'm drawing in now are still sitting in the box that they came in there 
Oh, I thought last night when I heard that A4 paper, I thought, now I'll never ever need to know that, and not even 24 hours later. It's like eight and a half by 11, right? It's like yeah. copy paper size. <laughs> No, I think I need some water, so I got water today. I should show you guys the water. And you can guess which guess which kind of water I got. Jevion. Fire water. Oh crow. Do you like oh crow? <laughs> Damn ass water. Is that a real thing? <laughs> I don't know. I just found it and I liked it. So it's <laughs> uh, pretty, um, pretty good photoshopping if they've made the label like that or they've just printed up a label and stuck it on. <clears throat> yeah, apparently, if you drink smart water, you're not very smart. Mm. Or, or you fell for it. Some of that water's like t totally ridiculous, you know, like eight bucks for a, a pint of water. <laughs> it's like, what are you freaking us? You could buy a, a beer for less than that. <laughs> you know? One of them that's like number three or four, it's, I mean, if I could think of the name, we'd know it, but it's bottled right over, um, just right down from my, actually my sister's house. It's not even half a mile, quarter of a mile. I remember when they put the bottling, it's, and it is off of a spring, you know, an underground spring that comes up in this field, and they bought it. There's oh, a shoot. I thought you were going to say that they got it from your sister's house. They just dip the bottles in the toilet and fill them up. And I don't know. Them <laughs> but that's water that, we, you know, we've all played in and fished in, and, you know. But I remember it was such a big thing when they built the truck, having the trucks come down that road they live on, and so it's... Uh, you know, I guess they had the, had the, uh, the, whatever, the power to, anyway, the county built them their own road that goes over to the highway so they don't have to go on the back road anymore. you got to wonder how much. Oh, hello, Scungy. Hey, Sarah. you got to wonder how much, um, how much water those kind of things take out of the aquifers and stuff. Right. I don't know what we're talking about. So we're talking about people that happening? spend eight dollars for a bottle of a pint of water. Bottle of water. It used to cost us um, at that house where I used to live. Um, that wasn't set up properly for water but it was out of town so it didn't have like town water and it used to cost about 250 dollars for half of a tank which would really not last very long so i feel like that was um very expensive water mm -hmm. it hadn't been that long divine she did oh. draw some elk butts. Yeah, that's true, Mike. Yeah, I'm really, really wanting to know. I'll be back. I'm going to go see which one it is. Oh, my God. Hanging upside down. Look at that. Feels pretty good, too. That hang upside down? Yeah. I was yeah. upside down for a really long time. But um, there is this thing I wanted to get, and it's like a stool that can help you to do um, inversions, like headstands and stuff, so that you can have to see on your arm and you just your head on the floor and stuff. And um, I don't know, it looked really fun. I put my phone in a little holder upside down, that's what that was about. 
Uh, don't talk about me, Pam. I'll still be listening, but I'm going to see what water that is. I'll write it down in my notebook. All right. I had a friend that. send me six notebooks today, Sarah. Oh, six, six spiral note. They're and they they're just lined notebooks, but yeah, she sent me like six of them. That is lovely. Yeah, <laughs> very rich in notebooks. I mean, I I um I really like a nice notebook. Sometimes I have trouble starting in them, but if you're not too precious, I can start. But if I had six, that would be dangerous because I would start writing one thing in one and then I'd get to a thing I wanted to write in it and I'd be like, oh, no, it can't go in this one. Then I'd have to put it in the next one. And what I end up with <laughs> Well, I decided like, to use one of them to write down all my sales in, like on the stream so I don't have to. And I'll use one. That's a great idea. I'll start writing addresses in so I can just look in a notebook instead of having to find people's addresses wherever they're tucked in my email or in my messages or messenger or wherever I can just like have them all in a notebook. These are really good ideas. Yep. And the reason she sent them to me is because I did a, a, um, uh, video one time about how I write everything down, like the colors that I use on every painting and stuff so that I always have it in case I ever need to, to go back and repair something or whatever. I know exactly what colors I used. So she decided that I could use six of them, I guess. So that I worked. Don't, I don't think you can have too many notebooks. No, this is true. Jenny Lynn says, Sarah, I received my Scunch Princess Dragon shirt. I love it. With Very love. nice. Yay, that's exciting. Actually, I saw um, that one of the shirts sell because I don't sell very many things because I don't really, like, this is the only place where the shirt oh. still gets plugged. <laughs> um, I've, and I've got a whole notebook that's my list of people that's, like, my shit list. I have a whole notebook just for that. You if know what my mom does? Black book. When she, when she um, <laughs> has someone that she really doesn't like, um, she puts Who's them this? in my mother. Um, she puts them in the freezer. So what she does is she draws herself a little caricature of the person. And this is a woman who is not an artist who draws at all, but this is probably the only time that she puts her mind to drawing. And she draws herself a little caricature of the person that she wants to be rid of. And she puts them in the freezer. <laughs> Sometimes you go to a house and you find someone in the freezer. <laughs> oh, I always used to joke around, you know, if somebody said something, I'd say, well, you just moved up on my list. And then, you know, they asked me, well, what list is that? Well, my, my run amok list, because, you know, it'd be totally uncivilized to go postal and not have a list to just randomly start killing people on the street. You know, everybody should have a list, right? Absolutely. Absolutely, yes. But when I was working on Cape Cod at this, um, this um, mortgage company, the lady that was manager of the office. I was learning a new, I was a secretary and I was learning a new program. And she was walking by and she like touched my computer and totally screwed up the whole training program. Like by the time that I got back on it, I had lost like a full half an hour of stuff and I was not real happy with her. But yeah, she had to touch it. She had to mess it up. And um, I still, like, at the end, I still pass the, the test that they give you because I always pass tests. But, but um, it's smart water. Anyway, she, she apologized, and I told her, I said, well, it's okay. I just moved. You just moved up on my list. And she did the what's, what list is that? I told her, you know, my, my run amok list. She actually, she didn't laugh. She got kind of a horrified look on her face. This is my boss. Right? Walking backwards got this slowly. Horrified look on her face, and she went in her office and shut the door. <laughs> I 
was like, oh, damn. <laughs> it's okay. Some people take life too seriously. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> Bob, did you want to get... Did you want to give Sarah your news, Bob? Um, I'm posting the link to this water. It's Crystal Springs, and it's actually got pictures on their website. Um, that it's just like taken from my sister's front porch of their facility. So, um, yeah, it's sad news, Sarah. It's the XC water. Sorry. No. That's news you have for me. <laughs> Well, for everything. Oh, yeah, I know what he's going to tell you. It is, it is sad. Prepare yourself. Okay. Prin Hi. Princess Leah didn't make it. The little rat. Oh, Bob. Yeah, she stopped eating as much, but she was still eating. But she, she passed yesterday morning. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. That I put her in the woods under the leaves, so she didn't waste for sure. It is so sad, especially when she made it, you know, so far past that snake. And you know, I put a live mouse in there about two days after that, and she ate that mouse in just a minute, so it was the shed she was in. But anyway, circle of life and all that bullshit. On to the next chapter. All that, all that bullshit. Hey, it's like, it feels like that sometimes. Well, I wonder if I did, Trash Cat. I thought about taking her to work with me and uh, to the art and trying to feed her, but there's never any time there. Usually, don't even get to feed myself. But anyway, I didn't. I don't think I was feeding her frequently enough, but I'm tight now. Pam, I can't post that link. That's why I put it back there to see if you would post it. It's very demanding keeping a baby animal alive when you're not oh, yeah. a natural parent. I told the store owner I was in there after I started feeding her, and I told him what had happened. And... Uh, I said, I thought about bringing her back and just maybe putting a dot, you know, blue or red on her tail. And he said he'd already sold the mother and the other pups. So I don't know if he had him when it was nursing or not. So. Godfather 1010. What does that 1010 mean? Yes, sir. Time. I just like copied the whole thing. <laughs> Alpine spring water, and it's rather it is mountain, it does come from the mountains there, but they're not you know like the smoky mountains or anything, they're just our local mountains, anyway. So, Sarah, um, I was gonna do like auction some stuff tonight, but I'm not going to because I have not been feeling good all day. But I'm going to do an auction tomorrow, tomorrow night. So if you cannot make it, be sure to send Blackie some pictures. And I'll try and do that because I probably cannot make it. I think I've worked out that with my work, if I have advance notice, I can probably arrange something, but I may not be able to arrange something for tomorrow. Because yeah, well, like I said, I was I was planning on. Most I'm having some stuff for tonight, but I have just not been feeling good all day. I woke up in the middle of the night, not feeling good, and has not been getting any better. But um, tomorrow night, so if you if you can send some stuff to Blackie, some photographs, stuff of, of like in one file, so he knows that everything he shows is for sale, and we'll see what we can do. And usually Sunday night we have a bit a more people anyway so so it should be good so yeah. did you get in, in trouble when you fiddled your hours at work the last time no no i didn't well it, it's hard to explain that 
like my actual boss wasn't there so the last time it didn't matter at all but the thing is the lady who is my boss just she's really nice lady and she's just really cool i mean i say she's really cool it's like anything kind of goes she i i never really no one there knows anything about me because <clears throat> she's the only person i really talk to and um i don't talk to her she just talks to me <laughs> <laughs> But she's like, I get there and I'm like brushing and I'm going to get in my work. And then she's like half an hour of talking to me about everything. <laughs> and I'm like. Never volunteer any information. Never. But um, I I haven't even talked to her about the change around that I made. But you probably know. It's, it's a very like convoluted workplace. I work for this like that job because it's not the only job i do but that job is like it's just this massive company and there's so many different like facets and stuff and she talks all the time about how it used to be like just a small company and then they got bought out by someone and then they got bought out by someone and now it's all this big thing but it's just like there's just so many different people and so much different someone i honestly don't think about it. I'm just there and you know she'll be like oh all the levels and all the different people and she talks to all the people and she enjoys the social aspect of the work i guess um i don't i don't and keep on me oh my god actually though on friday after i was working on the farm so i had the dog with me and i was coming home but it's late at night so it was already dark and I stopped off at the service station to get some um, firewood uh, because I wasn't sure about how much I had. I thought it was a good idea to get a bag of firewood. And so I have my dog in the boot. And so my dog is she's stupid. Like she barks at people, but she's not like aggressive. She's like wants to be lick, like she wants to lick people and let them pet her. She doesn't want to be linked. Maybe she does. Um, I don't know what she wants, actually. But anyway, so I went into the shop and I paid for the firewood and the guy had to come out and get it out of my car. He's just like a young guy, probably like And um, I opened up the boot and she was just sitting in there peacefully and he went and got the firewood and he brought it around and went to put it in the boot and she just went nuts and she jumped out of the boot and like lunged at him and was just barking and barking and sent him back to him. And he was like backing off and defending himself with the fire. He's like, <laughs> and yeah, and he really like, he was like, whoa, freaking out. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like, to her, you know, get back in the car. So she got back in the car. Uh -huh. And then he very quickly still put the firewood in the car where she just like, was reaching out and sneaky licking him all over the arms while he was trying to put the bag of firewood into the bag of the arms. <laughs> like he went from like aggressively backing him off to um, licking his elbows. Um, but it's just funny how um, aggressive that bark can sound from such a ridiculous little creature. I mean, I'm sure she's not. I'm sure she actually was angry. She could bite. You know, she's not small. Oh, uh, one time I went to see these people that had not had, um, they get like snowed in every winter time up in Montana. And um, they don't see anybody from like October until things thaw out in the spring. So about this time of year, I mean, they literally don't see anybody because they can't get out there snowed in. Kind of so um, we went to see them and they hadn't seen anybody. So they were... They were all excited because we were their first company. So we get out of the car and I'm like the last person in line. There's about one, two, three of us, four of us counting me. So I'm last in line and their dog came running out of the house and ran right past everybody and bit me on the ankle. I mean, seriously, he bit me, which is kind of odd because dogs usually really, really like me. Most animals really like me for some strange reason, but, but, um, so we go in the house and, you know, it hurt, but it didn't break the skin or anything. I wasn't worried about it. 
So I sat down at the kitchen table and I was visiting. I looked down and that dog spent the whole time we were there for about two hours and it spent the whole time while we were there with sitting in front of me with his head in my lap, looking at me with these sad eyes, you know, like, oh my God, I'm so sorry I bit you. <laughs> he absolutely would not leave that spot. He had to have his head on my lap the whole time that I was in the house. <laughs> My dog has loved the last couple of hours because prior to me coming on here and one of the reasons I was late is that my sister and my niece came and it was going to be a Mother's Day thing today and it all didn't happen and then they turned up by surprise. Um, but just my sister and my niece um, and my niece's new boyfriend um, who I didn't know was coming either. But so my dog was just in heaven because she could just go to one person and and like she does like the beg so she begs for people to love her <laughs> and uh. so she just one person and they'd pet her and pet her and pet her until she, they were like tired and then give her back. And then she'd go to the next person <laughs> and she just did like the round yep. for I uh. think for about two or three hours I don't know she two had a good visit she really did. She loved it. And by the end, she gets this look, and I don't know how to explain it to me. It reminds me of a seal where her eyes just get really big, but she, like, keeps her ears so low. You know, not the excited ears. Her ears are, like, flat and sleek, and she's been petted so much that all her fur is <laughs> sleek. So, yeah, she had the petted seal look. G'day, Belle. G'day, Travis. Travis, hello. And hello, Belinda's Crystal and Succulent Garden. I don't think I've seen you in here before, so hello and welcome. That's Craig's other half. Oh, okay, cool. Bill. I didn't know that. Hey, Bill. Thank you for your sweet email. I like this out of that. I used to have a Crystal and Succulent Garden. I still live in a place out in the forest like always in there in the forest um for mikey i live out near minion falls and i had this giant fig tree with huge buttress roots and i moved in there and i wedged all like crystals and succulents all into the roots and it was a beautiful they are a nice combination is what nice. i've to say i think congrats oh, on your fundraiser bill too well done. Somebody else said it last night. I think it was Cora Works that her and Craig are always doing stuff for other people um, like that, always. Very nice. I like the t-shirt. My kids will probably like it too. But whose t-shirt? Yours. Your oh. t-shirt. Yeah. I like it. Thank you. Walmart five ninety eight. I'm gonna mess it up. Oh, nice. It shows that Bob is the root of all evil. Right. The roots of all evil. That looks like an Anubius there, but I didn't even look to see if, what they were. Got their names at the bottom. No, I want one of those for my fish tank. The Anubius? That's yeah. They're pretty. I say it's a fish tank. It's not a fish tank, is it? If it has no fish in it. I have a oh, tank just, with just a very wet terrarium. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I went down to the creek yesterday. Um, there was not a sign of fish anywhere. Not Water's one. Water's getting too cold. That very cold. The coast. Um, is, there, is there a deeper area that they go to, like a, 
a place a creek runs to a lake or something that they can get in deeper water and stay warm? Well, so I believe that certainly a lot of them, there's sort of this area. So I don't know how to show it. I, I'll try really hard, but then my brain's going to stuff up. There's like an area that is sort of deeper and has grassy, uh, oh, my God, my brain. No, I can't do it like that. Anyway, there's an area. I, I can't show you properly. But anyway, there's an area. It's sort of like grassy banks and logs and things. And I think they hide in there. And then from the creek where I have, there's like it goes up one way um, where it's sort of more flowing and across the rocks. And then it comes in and there's this kind of slow area. And then it goes off the other way rushing. So I think that what a lot of them do is that they spend a lot of their time, um, you know, they just hide a lot more and come out only a couple of the days and stuff like that. I'm sure there are some that travel, but I think that a lot of them, um, uh, they're just not, when it's warm, they're right out in the middle of the water from morning till night, you know, hanging out everywhere. I think that they hide around that stuff a lot more. What and, sort of fish? Um, so as far as I know, the things that I've seen are we've got lots of turtles. We have got something that's either um, an Australian bass or estuary perch. There are mullet. There are eeltail catfish. Um, there are gudgeons. Rainbow fish, and then there are other kinds of fish that I haven't necessarily identified. We also have freshwater mussels, um, and shrimp, and prawns of some different varieties, freshwater varieties. There, um, also apparently there are platypus in that creek, but I have not been lucky enough to see any yet. It's not a fish, but you know, creek wildlife. Um, I'm trying to think if there's someone else I'm forgetting. That's mostly what I've seen there so far. Nice. So, on that note, I'm not sure what I've done yet, but yesterday I tried to chuck a bunch of stuff on my YouTube in shorts because they're all films that I didn't make to share with anyone. They're just like little tiny films that I've got. I put as many until YouTube said that's your limit. You've put too many videos up today. Um, but I tried to put some that, um, like, I just wanted to share with people on stream. Like, say, the stuff that I talk about. So there are some pictures of my dog. There's some pictures of the creek. There's some pictures, videos. Videos of, you know, the turtles and some of the fish. I can't remember how many things went up because there was a whole bunch that I was putting up and then they came with a notice saying your upload limit is reached or something. So okay. um, I wanted to put them up because I talked to people on stream about where I live, where I'm going and stuff, and I just wanted to put up some stuff to sort of so that I can share and encourage people to have a look. I'm not interested in like building YouTube channel and stuff like that, but just so that people kind of know what I'm talking about or can see some of the fish. So there's like really cute video. The mullets are my the mullets are my favourite. They are really cute, and I really really like them a lot. <coughs> They're such a derpy fish. They're so good. <coughs> so, good day, buddy. I call them rock nuzzlers because they mm. just come up to the rocks and they just like nuzzle the rocks and they're, they're terribly cute. But so I would, you know, I don't know. I love the idea of being able to share that stuff with people for someone to actually see it and then be able to go oh yeah that's like 
at my house. Well, okay. have you done any fish uh, besides the series you did? Um, no, not really. Because uh, alongside, as I've mentioned before, with sculpture, I don't know fish. I don't ever, um, I've tried a couple of times doing fish and they're just, um, it's like I don't have them deep enough in my brain. They're always wrongly proportioned, which is funny because when I draw people, they're very wrongly proportioned and I'm really happy with that. So maybe I need to just get over it. But, um, oh, but I did. I did the rainbow fish that Sam bought. Oh, yeah. And actually, yeah. that is my favorite fish that I have. Yeah, done. I forgot that. I like it better than the others. Um, yeah, I also did a prawn once for, um, do you remember Sir Prawn a lot? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so for fun, I did a Sir Prawn a lot prawn. I haven't, I, been, I haven't been to his space in a while. I don't think he's been active for a long oh. time. Oh, okay. Probably not get notifications. Yeah, I haven't seen him forever, so. He was only, when he was doing his YouTube channel, I think he was only 17 or 18 year old. Kid, yeah. So yeah. I think yeah. Yeah. or something got in the way. Life, yeah. probably. Life gets in the way of lots of stuff, isn't it? Ain't it the truth? Yeah. Not very many people hang around as, as long as we have, Bob. Oh, there's somebody else named Bob in the chat. Um, I don't know if this will show up, but... Oh, uh, awesome. Yeah, I like that. That's that was cool. my, That was my prawn. I did just special for him, you know. It has the top hat and the cane. Yeah, that's pretty cool. He, he hung out with uh, Blake and uh, I can't remember now. Aquamate. Aquamate. Yeah. All the Aussie guys. He was, where was he? Adelaide or South Australia or something? Yeah, yeah. Adelaide. Yeah. He's a good kid. Yeah. He was. I'm sure he still is. I don't think he's dead. <laughs> Whether well, he's gone bad. Um, I'm going to run off and make myself a fresh cup. Actually, I probably should use my other cup. I couldn't find my Nemo cup, so I used my son's cup. And it has sushi on it. And I like it. But um, sushi cup. The, handle, sushi cup. But the handle is like really thin. And it, I don't like it very much. But I'll see. I might still not find my Vimo. That, that reminds me of the time I was drinking coffee and not that long ago in the last year. And I got to the bottom and I'm like, what the hell is this? And it was half of a, a frozen thaw, uh, jumbo, um, not a shrimp, but yeah, one of those things. <laughs> and I had drank the whole cup of coffee and didn't even know it. <laughs> I guess I dropped it out when I was thawing some. Oh, well. A little bit of extra nutrient. Mm -hmm. That's almost as bad as when I clean my paintbrushes off in my coffee cup which I do tend to do once in a while. Well, I'm glad I decided to revisit this 
uh, painting I was so disappointed in. Not oh, that I've cool. you're done. Well, not that I've done anything spectacular. It's still very amateur, but I'll show you if you want to see. I do want to see. Uh, you remember the tree didn't have any branches on it. So, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's um, more than I meant to, but I think, well, everything else is overdone, so it matches. And I've decided to put a, a hill over there with some water, and I'm trying to put some white caps on the lake in a minute. Very nice. That's cool. Yeah, I'm happier with it. It's all just learning a little bit. Yeah. It's for fun. This one will probably go for $21. Grasshopper says you need to do a dolphin jumping out of the water with a machine gun. <laughs> that would jazz it up, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. And dolphins is one of my animals' uh, specialities that I draw. So He's over there in his cage eating. He must have got tired of all this. They grow up so fast. Huh? I want to tell a story, but I also feel like I just always hijack the stream by telling my story. <laughs> Is it inappropriate? I'm probably too. No, I think no. it's great. great Any time is a good time for a story. Right. Uh, but the thing is, I'm not very good at telling stories, which is funny because I was always the teller of stories to my kids for many years. But mostly that's because I got to read books by better storytellers than me. But anyway, um, so we're really lucky here. And down near the coast, you can often get to um, swim with dolphins and they'll come up the river and stuff. And so it's a pretty fun thing. Um, to see, but I had a really cool experience with dolphins when I was pregnant with my third son um, because sometimes it can be a bit daunting and scary to swim with them. Like I swim with them in the ocean and they come and because you just never know where they're going to come. They come out of nowhere and stuff. But I was in the river. So there's a place where you can go swimming and it's like you have the ocean and then you have like the there's like the walls and it's like the inlet to the river and just at the inlet there's like a little um, miniature beach where you can go to swim. And I went there when I was very pregnant um, with my son. And, um, yeah, a dolphin came up to me and like first it just like bumped me on the belly and then I was standing there and then it came and it was just like coming and being with me and like rubbing up against my belly and stuff. Like I think it knew that I was pregnant. And it may have been like, able to hear the heartbeat, you think? Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. Sonar. Get it, was a, it was a very um, special experience because it was really interacting with me. It wasn't just like, cause you get them sometimes. And you know, I know I've swum with them in the ocean and I've had them come in the river and just like they're near you and stuff. But this one like was coming up and coming up to my belly and everything. Um, you know, it was really special. I know they use their sonar for a lot of things. I don't know if that could be like an ultrasound type of thing. Not an ultrasound, but that's I am, cool. I am certain that that dolphin knew that there was a baby in my belly yeah, and it was and it was interested by that, you know? Yeah. And um, I don't know, it's pretty cool feeling to have a creature like that be interested in you. <laughs> but you know, we're pretty lucky actually. Oh, 
I never know what's going to come up, but I wish I like had my stuff prepared that I could show because um, I've got some really cool um, photos and footage of um, a, a family friend of ours. Like he's a friend, but he's like was my mum's friend, but he's also my son's friend. And so, you know, he's my friend too, but he's a photographer and um, a pilot. And so he does lots of flying and he um, used to take my son up in the plane a few times because my son was really into planes. And when they went up, they got some really cool pictures of whales and dolphins and like a whale baby and stuff just near here. Um, there's some really cool photos though that they got. Oh my gosh. I was just looking through photographs and you know what I found? A goose butt. <laughs> I have never drawn a goose butt before. Food for the people. Everyone <laughs> wants to see you draw more butts, Pam. I know. How many people vote? How many people want to see me do draw a goose butt? I know a goose butt. It would be a totally new subject for me. Every butt is a butt. <laughs> Sounds like a plan, Kragos. What's the plan? What's the plan? Get a battered sav and spend the afternoon oh, and some fish and chips and spend Sunday Arvo on the bed watching YouTube. Sunday Arvo on the bed sounds... What's a battered sav? Like a Pluto pup. But I think when it's a battered sav, it doesn't have a um, stick in it. Like a battered sausage. A saveloy, like a hot dog sausage. Okay. Wow. Done in, done in batter. You learn something every day. I really should be doing something arty. I was planning on, I didn't feel very well, but I also was like, I'm going to, get on and do some art before the stream starts and then all of a sudden out of the blue my sister and niece came who I got messaged yesterday they weren't going to come um and so I didn't make any art and I kind of am in a weird space now to try and start but I should do it premier hell hello G'day, TJ, Premier Hill. Talking about the dolphins and stuff reminded me of a story when I lived on Cape Cod. I was going to take my daughter out. They have like a, um, you can take a little cruise uh, to see the seals. And there's this one area um, where there's like big sandbars and stuff and lots of seals and seal babies and all that stuff so we were going to go see the seals but we got there and the the boats were booked all day long there was not a single opening not any of them they were booked all day long so i was kind of disappointed so what we did was we found another boat that would take you out on one of the islands <clears throat> and just drop you off and then pick you up whatever time you said you know tell them to pick you up at so we decided to go out on this island that was close and it had like a big long sandy beach and there was nobody else there and stuff and it was pretty cool so i was sitting up on the bank a little ways reading my book reading a book and my daughter 
went down by the shore and she was building a sandcastle. And I looked up and like she's right at the edge of the water and out in the water forming like a half circle around her where she's on the shore and they're out in the water forming a half circle around her is a bunch of seals watching her build the sand castle. It was really cute. They were trying to, and every once in a while they'd raise clear up out of the water and look, you know, at what she was doing. <laughs> it was like, well, we didn't go on the seal watch, but we went on the on a different kind of seal watch. <laughs> the seals were watching us. <laughs> yeah. The seal watched. But See yeah, it was, it was it was pretty cute. That's but this, so this area on, on Cape Cod where the the seals are, okay, now Blackie might get this right away, but it's like it's a big tourist spot. And there's big, long, sandy beaches. And then just out in the water a little ways, there'd be like sandbars that are covered with seals. And everybody, like mm -hmm. in the summertime, it's a real popular place to go swimming. And think about it. You got big, long sandbars covered with seals. What do you think is out in that water? Orca. Um, no, how Shark. about great, great white sharks? <laughs> it's like every once in a while they'll shut down the beach there at Chatham because somebody, you know, will be out swimming and, a, and they'll be looking at a seal in the water and a great white will take the, the seal right in front of them, you know, <laughs> and they'll shut down the beaches for a couple weeks. And I'm like, thank you. God, you guys are dumb. <laughs> you know, it's like. If you watch any kind of nature shows at all about sharks, one of the first things that you're going to learn is that great white sharks like seals and sandbars. You know? And that great white sharks, while they don't like people, often mistake people for seals. For seals, yes, exactly. Yep. Yeah. I always thought that it would be a great idea to like open up a little tourist shop and sell little shiny ankle bracelets to the tourists <laughs> for when they go swimming out on the sandbars. <laughs> Hi, Debs. Well, I remember when that happened, Craig. That was like 10 years ago or more, wasn't it? What happened 10 years ago? When a whale went into the river mouth down at Tare and got trapped in the river for months until ah. SeaWorld came and rescued. Oh, yeah. When I, when I first moved to Cape Cod, one of the first things that happened was on the news, like the second day that I lived on Cape Cod, there was a 15-foot um, uh, great white shark that got trapped in the, like the, um, what do you call it, like the, I can't think of a word for it right now, but it came swimming in from the, the ocean when high, tide water got stuck in the tide water, got stuck in a tide pool, a big tide pool. And they were trying to figure out how to get out, get it out of there. And they just had to wait for the, the water to get high enough again for it to swim out because there really is not a good way to move a 15 foot great white shark. Yeah. Um. Just a reminder, Pam doesn't have any politics in the chat. A good thing to remember. Yep, that's very true. No politics. So I heard that. Is there a, 
a seal called a crab eater seal. I think it's called. Oh, that sounds like a jungle out your door, Blackie. Yeah, well, that's kind of a misnomer, isn't it? Done by many movies since the 50s and 60s using kookaburra noises of as jungle noises in yeah. doesn't matter where you are, Africa, yep. South America. Yep. Yep. Asia. Yeah. He's like practically in town, and if not in town, he's in suburbia. <laughs> but, you know, the, um, so, sorry, this is just like a separate thing that maybe you think of which is at a place I used to live, I was out in the forest and we had these birds and they were pigeons. They're called wampoos. And so they make this kind of like um, hooting almost noise. And, um, yeah, so my mother-in-law used to come over and she was convinced that we had monkeys in the trees and she used to get kind of stressed out and agitated about the monkeys, no matter how many times you would tell her, they're not monkeys, it's just a bird. Um, <laughs> this hooting kind of sound was um, monkeys. On um, on Cape Cod, we had cat birds. Oh, we have cat bird, yeah. You, you have cat birds, yeah. They're, on Cape Cod, they're just like little black birds, but they, they go meow. <laughs> Well, our, our cat birds make a, you know, quite um, convincing cat noise. Yeah, yep. But I'm really jealous because I used to have, we had these amazing kookaburras. Uh, one of them, she was like, at first we didn't know she was female, so she ended up being called Alfie because she was like the alpha, all right, and she was the alpha. Um, she was like the matriarch of all the kookaburras, but she was very, very friendly. She used to come in our house. She would land on your head. She land on like my children's heads and just hang out there for a little while and she would bring her babies to our house and um you know i'm really fond of kookaburras and i'm fond of kookaburra babies i know that my kids think because they're really noisy and they are really noisy and ridiculous um but yeah she used to bring all her babies to our house and it was this it was a really beautiful thing to experience and then um we moved to another house and it was only like occasion, you know, there were kookaburras in the trees, but they never really like came to the house. And that's kind of the same here. It's like there are kookaburras out there, but they don't come in. And it's sad because we really love kookaburras and I miss having them. It was one of the saddest things when we moved was saying goodbye that kookaburra family lucky stones says there are cat birds all over we have cat birds in now i'm gonna the reason i read this is because i can never at, when i lived on cape cod everybody laughed at me when i tried to say that that city because to me it should be pronounced worcester but people there part? don't don't say ours at all so it's like wooster Wooster, Wooster or something that. like that. Wooster. Yeah, Wooster, Massachusetts. Like, do you guys have like Worcestershire sauce? Do you have Worcestershire sauce in America? Wooster? Yeah, Wooster they, sauce? They call, it, they call it Worcestershire sauce. <laughs> Worcester sauce. Wooster sauce. Worcestershire. Yeah, Worcestershire. Well, I, I found out when I, when, um, I grew up in Oregon. And in Oregon, like khakis are like tan colored pants that you wear. But I found out when I moved to Massachusetts and went to Boston that in Boston, khakis are what you start your car with. <laughs> khakis. Yeah, khakis. <laughs> <sighs> See, so much learning 
to be had. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so speaking of the kookaburras too, I've just been yeah. enjo enjoying the spectacle. Uh, this morning I put out a large pot out of the uh, slow cooker with the remains of last night's casserole, stew, whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> so I've got a three ibis here and three kookaburras here. And one of the kookaburras, I only saw one of them doing it because the bowl looks a little bit too large for the kookaburra to be able to lean into. He was waiting until he saw the ibis pull out a decent chunk of something that he wanted and then he attacked the ibis and took it off them and ate the big chunk of meat. But when they're pulling out pieces of potato or sweet potato or other bits, not interested. As soon as, <laughs> as, soon as he saw it pull out a big chunk of meat, he was straight onto it and stole it. Ah. <laughs> uh. uh. They're such great birds. I love them. Pardon me. Just wish they wouldn't foul up the bird bath. Half the stuff they eat, they pick it up and go and drop it in the bird bath to soak it. It's already just been soaking in sauce all night. And you mm. need it soft before you idiot. Do you have raccoons over there? No. Raccoons raccoons will do that too. They they like wash all their food off in the if you got like an outdoor <laughs> pond or anything and they'll like make it messy real fast. So it's like a raccoon who got given like fairy floss candy. Yeah. Yeah. They'll wash it until it's gone. Yep. They're like, I don't know. Oh, no. <laughs> trying to find where had it gone. Uh. Uh, that's not the one I was looking for, but I'm going to try and show you anyway. Oh. That's my middle son with Alfie. The uh, I can't make it. Stop reflecting. There we go. I was looking for the one that I took over on someone's head. It was such a great bird. Oh, yeah, raccoons like cat food. They'll eat the cat food right up. Everyone likes cat food. The problem with having over a hundred thousand photos is that you can never find the photo you're looking for. Yep. Yep. Because I was looking someplace, I've got a picture of my daughter with a semicircle of seals around her, and I couldn't find um, it. That would be great to see. <coughs> See what though it's like an emotional roller coaster looking through pictures from like you know oh yeah yeah it's like all my beautiful little children uh, in that little rainforesty home like uh, uh. actually there's a bunch of pictures i wanted to show people from this time but it's something i also haven't gone and looked at because i like the bugs that used to be out there there, were, there are bugs i've never seen anywhere except for there just like random incredible bugs and oh hi yes nice to see you hi what a sweet girl you are yeah I don't like it. oh my gosh my family was so impressed at how Un unlicky my dog was because apparently my eldest niece in the world um she has a dog who is obsessed with 
seeing everybody. And they came here and they were just like, oh my goodness, really just, she doesn't lick you. <laughs> Aww. See, I have so, this is not what I want to show, but it's like a skull in the garden. Aww. So many nice pictures that I can't like ever see. I just wish I could tell my um, my phone, look for kookaburras, and they always show me all the kookaburra pictures. Yeah, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it though? It feels like something it should be able to do. I mean, have you seen AI art and like everything that? artificial intelligence can do it should be able to just find pictures of a kookaburra in my phone yeah yeah oh my god sorry i'm sorry sorry i have to show you this picture that's my younger boy look at that boy he decided to put his pants up over his shoulders <laughs> hello Hey, I was I was I was I was actually gonna bring up the AI thing as soon as I joined the thing. I heard you bring it up. I was actually gonna ask, but you have you heard about that? Because you can literally tell the AI what to draw, and it draws it. Yeah, amazingly. You can. I'm. You know, artists are obsolete now. No, not necessarily. I mean, it's AI, so it's kind of artificial. You know, and nobody likes artificial. And I mean, in my opinion, I don't like artificial flavoring as much as I like natural flavoring. I mean, uh, there's, there's always gonna there's always gonna be a need for artists. I don't think that's gonna change anything, but it's gonna enhance a lot of stuff. I think it's gonna enhance our abilities. It's scary stuff, though. It's just I, I'm, I'm I'm hoping that it's benign, but it's, it's already predicted. It's not gonna be. <laughs> it's not gonna be our friend in the long run. What What is um, sad in terms of art stuff is that it uses already existing artworks by people to create artworks that then sort of render the original artist. You know, yep, I mean, they do. It takes everything into account that you tell it, and it also, that's what they train it on. They train it on every, pretty much a lot of the models, like the AI models, and I'm starting to learn a little bit more about how it works, and I don't think I'll ever figure it out. You know, I, I just have understanding and then my, pretty much my my uh, guess on how it actually works. Sarah, say I'm saying in the chat that you can do that that you can ask about the kookaburra pictures is what i think he's saying How yeah, do I do apple that? oh yeah i'm apple well, the model, so if you have an ai you have to have the model has to be trained with the image for it to work so depending on what model if you're using an online one like a mid journey or or if you're using um there's like several of them i don't i can't remember them all off the top of my head there's there's an offline or an online version of stable diffusion but if you can get different you get different uh, models they have been trained by different things because my niece came over you know i'm hanging out with she's, <laughs> she's like she's a teenager so she likes zelda and she wanted me to do it i couldn't get an accurate depiction of a character between and i tried different models and they gave different results same prompt same seed so and they go by seeds and they, they generate differently based on the seed. It's kind of like Minecraft world generation in a sense, how it generates the pixels on the screen. But it does it with uh, does it with uh, pixels instead of terrain. Sorry, I should be I should stop looking at all my pictures. I'm trying to find the kookaburra picture I want, but this is Oh, no, now I'm old. No, we can't see unless you're big. I was saying about how it was helping the koala with the chlamydia. And that's what that looks like. Like, that's what their eyes are like. Uh, 
the one we said. Like that, do, they, do they look like that in real life? Yeah, that's, uh, that is a real life picture of a koala with chlamydia. Um, that chlamydia? We caught, it's different. It's killing them out, dude. Yeah, but yes, it is. It's, it's bad for the koalas. And so wow, okay. um, when we found the koala like that, we tried to catch it and send it off to treatment the, for the it. Red, the, red, the red eyes isn't the camera reflection. It's actually they have red eyes like that. That's okay. the yeah, I would have thought that was just camera, camera red eye. No. If you look closely. Oh, wow. A, they, they look past, evil, man. That's creepy. Inflammation. Are they, are they like raccoons? Are they like, have you been around koalas? Like, are they, are they nice or friendly or are they skittish <laughs> and evil? Um, I wouldn't say that they're skittish. But they're not necessarily nice and friendly, but it depends on the koala that you find. They sound scary. They're pretty slow and peaceful, but they don't really want to be around people very much. Especially in breeding season. Oh, that makes sense. So they're kind of similar to raccoons, but they're not. I mean, they're raccoons, not like raccoons in the sense in that. <laughs> So they are not interested in anything humans have to offer. They don't want your scraps. They don't want to come near you at all. Like raccoons want to come and eat your garbage, yeah? And they, if you put out food, koalas are interested in eucalyptus leaves and being koalas. They're not so interested they're not necessarily, in They're not necessarily going to run from you, but they don't really, they don't, they don't, they're not like terrified of you. Yes, that's probably fair. They don't run, um, but it's, it's rare to see them on the ground, but you will sometimes. But it's most of the time, yeah, so you will see them most in the trees, and they're quite amazing in the trees because they can leap tree to tree. But as a general idea, they're pretty lazy and they don't have high energy levels. They mostly like to just sit in a tree and eat leaves. Hey, Derek. They've developed a wonderful system in their gut that when they only eat eucalyptus leaves, they um, basically get high from the enzymes in their belly processing the eucalyptus leaves. So essentially a koala is pretty much drunk all day long, sleeping eighteen to two hours a day. Fucking did they got they got the light, don't they? Damn. I'm jealous. I want to be a koala when I grow up. Yeah, except for the chlamydia. That kind of sucks. I mean is that really cool? Is that really the same chlamydia that women get sometimes? Well, all humans get chlamydia, but it's a different chlamydia to the chlamydia that humans get. Good eye, Derek. Okay. I, I mean, both, it's... Both, both male and female humans get a type of chlamydia, but the chlamydia that koalas have is different. Um, yeah. So is it, is it, it's got to be uncomfortable for them because it's disease. Yes. It is uncomfortable and it will lead to their death they are not treated, and so it is not very good for the koalas and it's affecting the koala population. And so that's why, yeah. It's a highly right. contagious form of chlamydia too. Oh, yeah. well, let's just hope it doesn't transfer over to humans. One well, way to find out. Yeah. No problem. <laughs> My man, it's, it sucks that koalas have to deal with that shit. I can't believe that. I mean, it's creepy. The world is full of a whole bunch of pestilences. Sure is. Should say the one the Tasmanian devils get. Yeah, that's way. I always thought that. I didn't even know they were real. And I mean, I thought they were, somebody told me that Tasmanian devils were an actual animal. I said, no, you just, just stop with the LSD, man. It's cartoons. <laughs> I watched that with my favorite cartoon when I was a kid. <laughs> but they're actually a little tiny rodent. Yeah, they look, like look almost—they're like almost like they look almost like a red raccoon. 
I don't know if you'd call them tiny. Yeah, they're not tiny. They're bigger than a house cat. Well, I've never seen them in person, so I mean, I, they, the pictures I saw, I always imagine they were about the size of probably this container. But maybe they're bigger than a raccoon. I didn't know that. Learn something new every day. <laughs> it's bigger well, than a house cat. Probably the size of a medium okay. dog with short legs. Give me 10 minutes. I'll get you some ice cream. Oh, can I have some too? Okay. Well, kind of ice cream. She wants me to. Well, what, it's vanilla ice cream mixed with them. I'm going to probably put some ra uh, raspberry jelly on it. She's already freaking like, super happy about that. <laughs> she the, thing about, She's the thing about the Tasmanian devil's sickness that's plaguing them, it's a form of cancer but it's actually a transmissible cancer. So when they're fighting and they bite each other, that can actually give each other this cancer and it's decimating. You, no, that is, that is really scary. Yeah. Because you know what? You know, if, if, the, if animals are getting, is this new? Because if animals get stuff, we end up getting it too. We end up getting a similar form of everything animals get this disease and then we get it. Well, we're animals. So if the kind of bacteria or the um, if it exists, no, you're then, not watching my TV. I'm gonna finish watching my show later. Right. It's not later. I'm gonna say pathogen, but it's not really even that. No. You know what's really cool though about a lot of animals in our country because actually, you know, people are talking about snakes and spiders, but um, something really fun in our country is the sounds that all of our animals make. Because, like, your Tassie devils make like an incredible sound. Koalas. If you ever hear actual koalas near your house, um, you know, I mean, people are freaked out by the sound that kookaburras make. Like, I was talking before about the wampoo pigeons. It's like a tiny little pigeon, but it makes a big scary sound and um you know so it's kind of interesting because apart from snakes and spiders our animals are not dangerous we only have marsupials right we don't have any hoof creatures we don't have any um sort of like clawed mammals what's the word for those guys anyway but our animals do make some really great sounds G'day, Vic. TJ. Yeah, I mean, Have you ever heard? Yeah, it's it's heard creepy. It? Some of them, you don't even listen. There's a couple of them that, I mean, there was this, there, I watched this YouTube short about a bird that can literally make a noise and copy every single annoying sound, car alarms and everything. Liar bird. Liar birds. We got those L guys. Those that birds that freak me the hell out. I ain't kidding you. <laughs> I tell you, you've heard you're in the middle of the bush and you hear a telephone ring or something like that or a chainsaw start to go and it's a lyre bird somewhere off in the shrubbery. I know. It's dirty. It's like, what the hell is going on? I mean, that's funnier than a parrot. A parrot can't even mock the, the sound of that. They can, they can imitate sounds clearer than parrots. Have you ever heard a koala? Like, I'm serious. Those guys sound aggressive. I don't know if I've ever heard of them. I mean, I've never your, heard of them. Yeah, your homework, Premier Hell, is to go and research some koala noises and Tasmanian devil noises. I was never, say, I, I don't know. I'm going to have to do some homework because I really don't know. Okay. But it definitely sounds interesting. I'm just glad I don't have to deal with koalas and <laughs> with chlamydia and kangaroos. I heard kangaroos are dangerous. <laughs> And I always thought they were friendly, and you could ride around in your pouch. Man, I was so <laughs> You're probably, probably in the majority with that thought process, you know. I think a lot of yeah, people Yeah, we always thought they were friendly and cuddly, like koalas were friendly and cuddly, and we were all wrong. <laughs> There's no such thing as an animal that's friendly and cuddly except for dog and cat. A domesticated dog and cat. No 
<laughs> Vic says, I've heard Tasmanian Devil's noise from Looney Tunes. <laughs> no, I really, I didn't know they were real animals, but, you know, I guess, you know, I was just a kid. I've, I didn't, seen, I've you know. seen them in zoos before. They're pretty, they, they look like a pretty red raccoon. And they're about that size. I mean, they don't spin around in a tornado like a cartoon, I'm sure. <laughs> no, only, only when they've had a few too many drinks. <laughs> too many, too many drinks. <laughs> that makes sense. That makes or, sense. Or a few too many amphetamines. I wouldn't give a Tasmanian devil amphetamines. They would probably spin around, look like a tornado. <laughs> but I don't even think. I mean, I don't even think the knowledge of amphetamines actually existed back when the cartoon was out. <laughs> I mean, the worst they had was cocaine back in those days. <laughs> now, actually, you know, cocaine's been around. I mean, uh, methamphetamine's been around since World War II, but it wasn't. Yeah, Hitler was always on it. Yeah, Hitler, so they, they're the ones that developed it. Hitler was, was the one that. That was an art piece, like, held up a piece of art and put it down and left the room. I mean, it could have been America, but America, probably, we, we, America probably developed it and we sold it to the Germans. Because we're, I, don't, I don't understand it. It makes no sense to me. All I know is the world is pretty twisted, in my opinion. You Look up cassowaries, what? too. Heard of cassowary? Doesn't sound familiar. It's a another large ratite, a flightless bird. That lives in Australia, the northern end of Australia. Very dangerous. They have a very, very big second toe on each foot that can slice a person open. Well, I've never heard of that. That sounds scary. Why didn't they make a movie out of that thing? That sounds pretty creepy. They're very pretty too. <laughs> Until you get so you get yourself slit open. <laughs> yeah. Well, apparently the most dangerous ones are mothers with their babies. Well, that goes to any animal. A bear, a bear and their cubs. Yeah, a mother bear and their cubs. They don't mm. tear you up. It yeah. wouldn't yeah. bother you otherwise. They'd actually, they're, they're not, they really don't attack people. But, I mean, grizzly bears maybe, but not black bears. But any time they got cubs, they, they, they'll attack anything that comes near their cubs. So if you see a cub, you better freaking get the hell out of Dodge. If you get close to that cub, you're freaking dead. If that mother comes around with her, her cub and you're there, whoo, you are in trouble. There, um, a place where my sister used to live, there was this nice little coastal touristy spot where there was loads of cassowaries all the time just walking around. And they'd often be mothers and babies, but because they were accustomed to humans being around, they weren't very attacky. But yeah, if you come across a full wild one, no exposure to humans, you're in strife. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, as long as they can trust you, they have a little thing. I, I watched a video just recently, and they were like, What the hell's going on? They're literally making peanut butter sandwiches and feeding it to a bear. The bear was sitting with them at the picnic table. Uh, were they Russian? I know. I had no idea where it came from. I was just short on YouTube. I thought it was pretty impressive, and it looked real. It didn't look CGI to me. Yeah, I think well, pretty much every every bear video I've seen with humans doing silly stuff is generally Russians. I just no fear. I, mean, I, I really, I'm not really right now. Nowadays, I've looked at people, and it's really hard. I mean, and since we've been so mixed lately. I, it's really hard for me to tell if somebody's Russian or... I mean, it's easy to tell if they're Asian. Dude, I get Chinese mixed with Korean all the time, too, so... <laughs> but, I mean, I can only tell certain things, but, that's, you know, it's offensive, maybe. I don't know. I don't, I'm, I don't mean to offend anybody, but I, it's hard for me to tell sometimes. I mean, I can't tell Chinese writing from the Korean writing. It is what it is, though. I, I don't know if we even have any raspberries left. I think we can eat them all. 
Emily! Come get your ice cream! <laughs> Come get your damn ice cream. You're going to have chocolate syrup because there's no damn raspberries when you want it. Looks like, looks like we might be out. I have to go look in the freezer. I don't see any in the freezer. I've already looked there. I got vanilla ice cream tonight, but this is what I got to put on my vanilla ice cream. Something, uh, I was so totally expecting you to pick up a bottle of Fireball. No, no, no. <laughs> it's like broken up for cooking, but it's really good on ice cream. Oh, there is some raspberry in here, but it's frozen. <laughs> like the ice cream. homemade raspberry jelly. <laughs> Hello, pretty boy. Hello. Is he saying fuck? Is he saying fuck? Is that what I keep hearing? Fuck, fuck, fuck. That's a smart bird. You don't get none. Million pen strikes and stuff. You don't even like ice cream, huh? You don't even like ice cream. Oh, hang on, buddy. Not only do you say that, now you don't see none. Very cool. Well, that is nice. It's great. Yeah, that probably that took a long time to draw out of bed. Yeah, a few weeks now. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's constant. A few hours a week. I wasn't thinking a few few weeks. I was thinking at least a few hours though. <laughs> yeah, I mean now, really I had sure to on on take me on me on a few weeks. Ooh, cool. Here, Hunter, you grab that, grab a bowl, and you scoop yourself out and if you want chocolate or whatever, you know. So it's in there. I told you, I go back, I go back, I don't. I use the spoon, just grab a spoon, it's soft. It's not going to take you no time to scrape the rest of that. Camera there. What? Just grab a damn regular spoon. You don't need it. It's not that hard. Put it in the microwave. It's only a tiny bit in here. Yeah. It's just as much as Emily's over there. Just scrape it all out. You can eat it out of the same container. Door. I know. So you don't like it. Up. Now, do you want chocolate syrup on it or you want raspberries? No. We'll give me a clean spoon maybe for it. No, you use that spoon for you. I need a clean spoon to put your answer.
There you go. That's a, that's a more than enough crab bread. What are you doing? No chocolate served to you. Get the hell out of here. Good luck to get Saturday. You gotta eat the rest of this ice cream. Right? I'm not kidding you. I'm not putting that back in the freezer. There's only a tiny bit in there. You gotta finish it. You wanted ice cream, you better finish it. There's only two more bites left in that container. Take it off. If you don't take it on, it's a I mean, I've never had to force my kids to eat their damn ice cream. <laughs> that sounds so insane. No, you need to eat it all. I'm not playing games. Don't waste it. Don't waste the ice cream, kids. Oh, crap. Hey, how about I got, I got a phone call? I'll, call? I'll be back. I got a phone call. Oh, good day, Debs. I don't know if I said hi to you or not, love. I'll, I'll, come, I'll come back if you guys are still alive. Come on. Let me guess. You want some of my chips? Pam, are you working on that goose's butt? I'm, I'm going to be. I was just pulling it up to where I could um, see it. I need a goose on this leg. everyone. actually just had a good conversation with all the kids about education and stuff. I actually really like this guy. Very cool. Oh, man, he dropped off. I noticed that. That's who you mean, who I've always before. Is that someone that we know? Nope. I don't have any more of those kind of papers ready. I haven't heard you say Huawei or Lovely one single time. Lovely? Thanks, Pam. Good eye, Skip. Hey, Skipper. Be back in a bit. Okay. I have to decide. Oh my gosh, I I do. What did you say, Sarah? I have to decide what I'm going to do. I oh. used my last. Oh. I mean, I can go and cut more of this paper. I, but, um, thought you, I thought you said I have to say. I miss her. Wouldn't it be nice if I had something to say? I have this crown. I have to say, and then I was waiting for the punch. Right. Line. I can't do this. I'm just I'll show you. The, I'll show you the photographs that I found that I'm going to draw. Oh yes, nice. Show us that. Okay, hold on. This is what I'm going to draw. Ta-da! <laughs> uh, I think all these have salsa. Do you eat salsa? Salsa? Just a little bit. He's trying it. He's tonguing it. Oh, he spit it back over here. You don't like it? Yeah, we'll put it right here. Is this an auction? Nope, we're gonna do an auction tomorrow night. I was gonna I was thinking about doing an auction tonight, but I have been sick all day. So 
We're going to try for tomorrow night. Nope, that was a goose. That was a Canadian goose. The goose is loose. Oh, you got Dorito in my paint. Yes, you got Dorito in my paint. <laughs> sure do. I think that's all you're going to have because the rest of it's got salsa on. Well, here's one. Since I looked at the chat. Oh, muscles all hurt, and I got the chills, and I just don't feel good. Uh, well, you could you could let us run the auction for you. Yeah, we'll do it. We'll do an auction tomorrow, tomorrow night. We usually have a bigger turnout on Sunday. I, when I stream on Sunday night, I usually have a bigger turnout anyway. So. We will do one tomorrow night. Yep. Floyd said he saw that while I... Good night, Skipper. Behave your damn self. Good <laughs> night, Skipper. Um, oh. And I want Eva. Always the pen that I want is not the pen I can find. Why? Oh my lord, did you wake up? Did you wake up, maybe? My kids are all really excited because a game that they've been waiting for for years. I don't know if you know about the um, Legend of Zelda. But um, a new game has come out recently and they are so happy. Is it like a PlayStation game or It's like Nintendo. So Zelda's, Zelda's always been Nintendo. So I sadly introduced them to the game. So I was like, oh, hey, this is great games, these ones. And now they are way more obsessed than I am. Awesome. Uh, but actually, it's a really cool game. It's like the first game. Uh, in the, the series, the one that they have now is like the second in the one, but it's not the second in all of them. The first one, um, it was called Breath of the Wild. It's actually just an incredibly good computer game if you do like that sort of thing. But anyone who will already know about it and already be playing it, and anyone who doesn't, not be swayed by my words. Mm. I've only ever played two video games. Hand of God. The first one was Donkey Kong, and I was in nursing school. I guess I was 18 or 19. And the second one, after, years after that, was Pac Man. But I've never owned either one. I missed out a little bit, I guess. Yeah, when I was a kid, um, everybody had something called a Sega. And that was really cool. 
and I really wanted one to be like everyone else. And my godmother um, bought me something called a Nintendo Entertainment System. And at the time when I got it, I was really disappointed because all the cool kids had a Sega. Um, hey, Andrew. But it turns out that I'm really glad I got given Nintendo because it gave me um, Super Mario Brothers, which I spent many hours of my life on. And um, also things like Zelda, Donkey Kong. Gosh, so many good things that have been a wonderful part of my life. So there was like nothing to do with Donkey Kong, though. It was like that's why I didn't like it, and I think that kind of I never tried anything else till Pac Man, and it was pretty cool. But I mean. I'm never that into Donkey Kong. I really enjoyed all of the Super Mario stuff, and I still enjoy Super Mario stuff. When they brought out a system called the Wii, and they had Super Mario Galaxy. Honestly, like, I loved that stuff, and I played it a lot, and I really, really enjoyed it, and I really enjoyed, um, like... Mario Kart and but also Legend of Zelda which was only ever on the and you know I really enjoyed all of those things Andrew, hello 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 As it turns out, I just don't know whether the console that I got given shaped more of my personality than I'm willing to accept or whether it is that I really did get given a console that turned out to match my personality a lot better than a lot of the others might have. Yeah. <laughs> I know that story. Got some sauce on it. He doesn't like mustard. We were sharing a hot dog with swallowing mustard on it. He accidentally got into the mustard and he spit it and shook his head and <laughs> did not like that. But mustard is so delicious. It was just yellow mustard. It wasn't hot, but he didn't care for that. Made me think about Ed and his aversion to mustard. Well, he's allergic to it. Oh, is he? Yeah, he's allergic to mustard. I feel like that's a shitty thing to be allergic to, although I'm allergic to maple meat, so I mean, that's a shitty thing to be allergic oh, to. Yeah. Too. I like to hook up. I like to like cook up a hot dog and roll it up in a tortilla and put mustard in it. Like put some mustard on it and then roll it up in a tortilla and eat it that way. Ooh, that I, I, I'm not. I'm not a fan of bread. I don't like bread. So. You know, I never did either until the um, I found out about the Dave's. Um, Amazing bread or whatever it is. It's expensive, but it's really good. Just each bite of it's good. It's got so much in it. <laughs> I 
Andrew says, I'm the host of the Drunken Truckers Nights, Tuesday and Saturdays. <laughs> Drunken Truckers Night. Yep, yep. Sounds like something that would go well with drunk with uh, drunken with uh, senior naked stick Oh, that's cool! That's cool, yeah, Sarah. Show us the other one too, because you were, you did like a quick art tease where you just held it up, put it down, <laughs> and left her. Awesome. These are the guys. Wow. Versions. Colors, beautiful. Is that one of those sample cards? Yes. Cover swatch, yeah. Oh wait, that's the, my brain is so confused by this thing. Awesome. What's really nice on these ones, and they're um, they're a different shape to the others, but they have like the color name on the back, as well as a little bit on the front. Nice. And I was enjoying that. I was packaging some up. When was it? Not long ago, for June, and I was noticing that. And um, I don't know. I like it when it says it on the back. These British paints ones, they don't say it. I don't think they say the colour on the back at all. Oh, they do a little bit. Don't they? Sweet candy. <gasps> Mind me of Wayne. So, uh, Blackie, when are you and Sarah coming by? Oh, you see, Sarah's a very busy lady, Bob. So we're purely, purely restricted by her schedule. No, we're not. Yeah, and not at all by the cost of lights and stuff like that. <laughs> I would love to um, come and adventure and sell art and have, you know, a visit in Bob's house. I mean, that would be the highlight, to be fair. But um, I would like that so much. It would be cool. We could hang out with Ed some. Just, uh, an hour away. That's what I thought Sarah said to go on an adventure. Ah, I missed it. Wow, well, cool to be to actually get to meet all of the people and you know, I would love that a lot. I wonder what a round trip airline ticket is from there to say Atlanta. I hate to think. I would imagine that we probably couldn't even get a direct one into Atlanta. My uh, friend. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to find out. Okay. I'll stop talking. My friend I volunteer with at the ARC, uh, she's gone for two or her family. He volunteers too. He's on the board of Rustman, but they flew out of Atlanta. They drove to Atlanta, which is two hours, and then they flew nonstop to Hawaii. Unbelievable. It was like 12 hours, I think. That might be the stopover that we'd have to do. Mm -hmm. Hartsfield, Hartsfield, Jackson, Atlanta. That's it. 
Sorry. I can't believe that he's putting himself in the cage, but he did. Someone's burning some really stinky firewood. I should be burning firewood. My house is going to get so cold if I don't start lighting fire soon. But... Um, let's say it's true at all. Noodle story is working out nicely. <coughs> is your dish cracking, Pam? That's not me. belated birthday Nola what he said Oh, nice. Nola's received some more Sarah mail. Oh, well, that's lovely to hear. I was going to say quickly because I'm in the middle of actually something, but I'll be back in one second. But uh, per adult, three and a half to four thousand dollars. It's a lot of snakes. And that's just airfares, let alone car rental and accommodation right. and all that shoo ha. Right. Oh my 
gosh, I just discovered a new trick with this paint that everybody in the world knows besides me. Guarantee I don't. Okay, George. No, I don't know if Dragon Lair got his picture I sent him or not. I haven't seen him. I guess he did. He's supposed to get there Wednesday. Sell all your discus again. Um, Mikey, you seem very intent on your artwork. What's happening there? I just showed it before. Ah, uh, but fuck that. I'm here now. It's like developing, isn't it? Kind of. I think I've done about 17,000 strokes today and it barely looks different. <laughs> no, but developing in terms of the pieces that you are doing. In the Thanks. Growing into what you're doing now. Do you think that there are any really good artists that collect art themselves? Yeah, absolutely. Yep, I've, I've sold quite a bit of my artwork to other artists. Really? Mm-hmm. That surprises me. Really? I think that... Um, a lot of times, I mean, like, sure, there are some people who don't make art and who really make a thing of buying art, but artists appreciate art. So I don't think it is surprising. I don't make me big or anything, but this one just like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> you had to know you were asking for it as soon as you said that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> blow me up. So, um, but I just saw this guy laying there, and um, when I was doing it, I was feeling um, I I wasn't sure if I was finished or not. But when I saw it sitting there, it actually was. It was really nicely finished, and I felt like I wanted to flash that guy on the screen. In small, you know, minutes. You know what I really want to do? I really, really, really want to have some big canvases and I want to paint them. Um, and I can't because. I tell you what, it, co it will cost $50 for a canvas about this big. With all the bits. If I want to start getting something really big and paint on it, it's just so much money and I can't do it. 
but I would really like to have like 10 guys like that, right? Like 10 massive big things and just go nuts on them. It would be so fun. Actually, I have this thing. It's not big canvases, but wait a sec. Oh, yeah, let's Nice, George. Did you see my shirt, George? I, I have this. They're not really lovely and big, like I said. I don't have that available to me. But I have these. And what I plan to do is get the... Um, so I have a, a belt sander and I'm going to sand some of the edges and I'm going to take these pieces of wood and I'm going to paint on them. And I have a bunch and now I'm trying to move them and they have sawdust on them because they had to get rushedly cut because so... My son bought, got a, um, a saw, like one of those ones where you can like put it down and it spins. What's that guy called? Rotary saw? Uh, Circular saw. Yeah. Sure. Same thing. Mm -hmm. A handheld one or one mounted on a stand? Mounted on a stand. A and he got saw? it from the um maybe so it has a whole a whole like plate and it has bits you can line up and it has like a big rotary or circular saw that you can lower down to cut yeah, and he got it from the tip shop to sell and I was like, oh, hey, I would like to cut some things. And then he was like, oh, hey, I sold it. So he had to really quickly cut the things before he gave it to the person he sold it to. <laughs> um, but anyway, so now I have a bunch. This is less than half because under my house I have these pieces of, so they're like hard wood, like really good, nice, hard wood. And they were under the house waiting for no one. So I decided to cut them up and use them to paint on. So anyway. We, we cut to two weeks in the future when the owner comes looking for the planks of wood that were under the house. <laughs> you know what? Here's the reason why it all, it all sort of came about too. Because, you know, the guy came to paint the deck and he pulled out some of those bits of wood to um so he had you know these metal they were like the seat of a bleacher it's like does that makes sense bleachers like those big metal seats at a sports yeah. stadium right so he had those and he laid them from my front door to my front steps for us to walk across yeah. but he had to put some long pieces of this wood to across the top of the steps for the bits of metal that we had to walk on to go across. And he 100% got those pieces of wood from under our house. And when he left, he took them with him. And that is what triggered me to go, I can just take those pieces of wood and draw on them. So I did. Um, sneaky, and sneaky them. photo. They're probably left right. there for re replacement parts for the deck. But he also is the person who replaced the deck previously. He is the regular handyman of this property. 
So I decided I don't care. I'm taking one, just like one really long plank of that wood, and I'm going to cut it into nice little pieces like this. No one will ever say anything. If they do, I will say, what the fuck? And they will say, I guess, what the fuck? Because what can they say? Uh, but anyway, I have these. But what I need to do is come along with my sander. I need to sort of round off and sand off some of those edges. And, and they are really solid and quite incredible hardwood. You can't even tell. They are powerful pieces. And I'm going to um, paint on them. I'm excited about them. I think the biggest paintings that I've done were 36 by 48 inches. 48. What's that, like a meter? Um, 91, 92 centimeters by 120 centimeters. Nice. I want to do some big pieces. Nothing at like the, the reality is that the difference between when Pam does a big piece and how much incredible work that is versus anything that I'll do. What's the biggest piece you've done, Skunji? Which that's yeah, that was my question. What's the biggest you've done? About, I'm just going to guess here, about 90 centimetres. Okay. Seventy centimetres. That's it. Yeah. I painted the hell out of this piece of paper. Logs would be okay to paint on. Yeah, like I have a dream of having a whole bunch of big pieces of, you know, canvas, whatever it is, um, really big and being able to just throw nuts on it. I would love that. But financially, I have no way of making that reality. I'm gonna work on so you know a lot of the stuff that I do, even though you know, I work on paper that's not cheap paper. Some of it is cheap paper because it's these guys, not expensive, but it still does not the same as if I wanted to work on something really 
I remember that that movie with Eddie Murphy living in America coming to America coming to America and then I guess I'm, I'm misassociating the song living in America I can't get that song out of my head living in America oh I can't sing I can't even get the tune living in America James Brown wasn't it yep that's it Oh, I don't know that. You ever hear that thing about James Brown? How he he used to um when his uh, band members would stuff up, he'd go like this to them. So you owe me five bucks now. Every time they'd fuck up, he'd charge him five dollars and take five dollars out of their pay, and keep a running tab going in his head while he's doing a live show. Yeah, but that's. It's it's testament to how nice a man he was. Jim, Jim Brown died yesterday. The football player. Jim Brown. Jim Brown. I don't know football. I don't either, but I've heard of Jim Brown. He was eighty seven. Let's see, this one here, I'll show you a couple. Um, this one was 36 by 48. Rocky. Wow. And I did another one too. This one here was the same size. As this one was 36 by 48. Did it work when I switched? Oh, it didn't work, did it? What are those birds? Are they Orioles or Blue Jays or something? Uh, magpies. Oh, okay. Uh, magpies are very different. But... I think your magpies are related to Blue Jays, aren't they? They're in the J family. Those I look like birds. Sure. Well, we're not going to see the other one. Yeah, I was just getting ready to pull it up. It wouldn't let me switch to it. I've got to like actually like click on it. So I'll show you that the other one that was thirty six by forty eight is this one right here. Nice. How did that rock? Let alone the fur. And that is actually big enough to where I could not um, frame it and fit it in the back of my truck. I had to like, it took up the whole bed of the truck just to lay the painting in there. Yeah. So I had to like, have the, when I took it to an art show, I had to like have the frame in pieces and then put it on the painting after I got it to the art show. <laughs> Craigos says, our magpie is black and white only and grey as a baby. Another interesting fact about our magpies is their patterning on their feathers is like a fingerprint. None of them are exactly the same. Oh, cool. I am not sure about ours. I don't think they're all the same either. I think they're all like they vary a little bit, but they, they've got some blue on them. And if you, you go from one region to the next, uh, your magpies can have vastly different patternings, whether they have more black or more white, but very different striping and whatnot. <clears throat> we should have dragon lair in here to know for sure, but I think the ones that we have are are like um, related to like crows, but I'm not positive.
Yeah, our ones are distant cousins of crows in the same genus or something, whatever the next level up from genus is. No, it probably is genus. You magpies there are black with some brown on them. That's odd. Ours are ours have quite a bit of like turquoise and blue on them. So they must be different going across the United States then. Yeah, see, this shows the color of ours pretty good. Hang on, I'll switch it over to the Google. Yeah, see, that's pretty much the color of ours. I got it's kind of a turquoisey blue. And they've got uh, so black on like, their chest and stuff, but they can vary because, like, even here oh, you can yeah. see they can have like blue further up on their wings or more white, or you know, they can vary see, a little bit. So, see that Did dodo I one, the, the dodo link third from the left that's the Australian magpie. Which one? The dodo, there's like a video link there to YouTube. Yeah, that, that, like a little Australian place, doesn't it? What? I can barely see it. Yeah, they're in the Corvidae family, which I think is like the same family as crows, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Corvids is crows. I know they act quite a bit like a crow. They're they're pretty smart and stuff, so that's a smart, but they don't act the same as our crows. Our crows are very smart. Yeah, our crows are really smart too. I wonder who the first human was that worked out that ravens could send letters and know where to go. I wonder how long that took to perfect. Mr. Postbird. Why'd you bring me a note? Merritt, hello. Haven't seen you for a while. Merritt. What? Mega long time, I say. Much, much. Oh, very awesome. I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm putting you back down again. Don't get mad at me. <laughs> I actually don't know about that guy. I'm really happy with two of the earlier guys, but... Um, Well, I'm thinking I'm going to call it a night for tonight. It's probably wise. It's getting very cold out here and I'm running out of light. Yeah. 
and I'm not feeling super good. We're going to have an auction stream, though, tomorrow night. Same bat time, same bat channel. And Sarah, you need to send some stuff to Blackie and, like, label it so he knows what what is for sale in there. You know, that it's send stuff that's I'll all try. for sale that you want to throw up to auction. If you can't make it. If you can make it, it would be super fantastic. If not, then send some stuff to Blackie so he can show us. Yeah, I would and do give, my best. Give, give people the opportunity to buy a couple small pieces from you at least, you know. We'll just speak to Carol, Coral when you get to work tomorrow. Well, I will. I was watching crows the other day burying food, then a squirrel came along and pinched it. <laughs> Uh, okay, so I'm going to tell everybody good night because I need to like get warm and um, go back to feeling sorry for myself and go to bed. <laughs> so tomorrow night, though, we will be on tomorrow night, everybody. So good night, guys, and thank Thanks, you, Bob. Night, everyone. Skunji and Blackie and everybody in the chat and all that, everybody that modded and everybody that said hi and everybody lurking and good night, guys. All right. All right.